Hey bulls and bears, it is Wednesday. Hope you can hear me, there's a lot more birds out here than I thought. <laughs> um, it's about 80 degrees here in San Diego. Very nice day, uh, birds chirping, and I uh, thought it'd be a good day to bring you a video from the backyard. And uh, I had somebody waving at me from the window over here. And as you can see uh, behind me, I've got my, some plants, and these are potted plants. And because of the pests back here, the squirrels, uh, the raccoons, I've had to wrap them up with this uh, chicken wire. And it hasn't stopped them. Um, what they did is they started climbing over the top, so now I had to get some chicken wire to put on the top of them. So these are tomatoes, and we got some other plants growing back here. We got pests are a big problem here. Uh, we've got a lot of news to talk about today. We're going to talk about the food situation. Of course, the economy, the financial situation as it um, continues to unfold. And uh, it's not looking so good. Um, the Fed, as you probably know, three quarter percent rate hike. That's what everybody's talking about in the financial world right now. Uh, 75 basis points. Um, we've been talking about this. Some people say that this is not nearly enough to tamper down inflation because when inflation is officially it's close to 9%, we know it's a lot higher than that. But even if you look at the official number, which is very flawed, um, what's three quarter of 1%? It's not very much at all. Uh, the problem is the decision makers on this are trapped. And they know that these rate hikes are not enough to really affect inflation. Um, do you think you're going to go to the grocery store tomorrow after this rate hike or even next week and uh, prices are going to come down? Do you think you're going to go to the gas pump and prices are going to come down? What it will do though is uh, maybe pull back on a little bit of the lending and we're yet to see that really unfold. We see home asking prices are coming down um, and that's more to do with the other area uh, as far as the balance sheet goes and the purchases of treasuries and bonds. Um, mortgage rates continuing to spike over a 10 year high right now and um, a lot of things are changing and just as we predicted. Uh, but here is what's happening over in Sri Lanka. Let's talk about Sri Lanka uh, with the food situation. Potted plants back here, a good time to talk about the food situation. Food prices skyrocketing here in the US Sri Lanka government workers get Fridays off to grow food ahead of shortages. Now isn't it interesting that it's just the government workers? So the people that don't work for the government, they don't need to grow food. And I think that's why a lot of people are so non-self-sufficient because everybody's just too busy um, with your lives. Even if you work a 40 hour week, that's, that's a lot. When you take eight hours out of your day, <clears throat> and for those people that have to commute back and forth, that's another hour there, hour back sometimes. Hopefully not that far because your gas prices are going to be outrageous if you have to go an hour commute each way. But um, let's say you do have a commute. Maybe it's a half an hour. Uh, so you work eight hours. Maybe you take a lunch for half an hour, an hour. There's nine hours. You commute a half an hour each, each way. There's ten hours. So ten hours of your day is gone. If you try to get eight hours of sleep a night, there's 18 hours. You don't have much time left for anything else. And if you've got a family, significant other, uh, other people, you know, that are going to take time out of your day, a lot of people just don't have time to grow their own food. So Sri Lanka, government workers get a four-day work week, get Fridays off. So they have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday now so they can start growing their food. That's how bad the food shortage is there. Uh, and uh, this is spreading. There's lots of different countries talking about food shortages and unrest coming out of this. Uh, does anyone think it's not going to happen here in the U.S.? Um, I don't know. The way things are looking, uh, I don't think anything's off the table here <laughs> in the U.S. People used to think, well, U.S. is the greatest country in the world. Some people still think that. Maybe they're right. Um, what are we the best at? Running up debt? Definitely. Um, having most of our population hooked on some sort of um, drugs? Yeah. Yeah. Look at uh, San Francisco. You can't even walk down the street. You better watch your step if you know what I mean. Uh, San Francisco. <laughs> so U.S., we're, uh, we're looking good because we are able to run up so much debt. It would be the same as a friend of yours or maybe yourself, you know, running up tons of debt. You're going to look uh, pretty good. You're probably going to have the newest cars, probably the nicest stuff, uh, a lot of new stuff. But in the background, you have a lot of debt. So that's what the U.S. is. Uh, 
partly, you know, anyways. Um, I do believe there's more good people than bad here in the U.S., but if you look at what's happened over the last few years, uh, we've seen some, uh, just some, uh, a lot of nastiness, you know, uh, in this uh, country. It's all over the world, but it's not just the U.S. Uh, Fed rate hike next. Let's talk about the markets. Even with the rate hike announcement today, markets in the green. Dow Jones up over 1%. All major indexes in the green, the Russell 2000, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P. Um, some people are saying that there's going to be a big run up in the stock market. I don't see that happening. I think there's going to be some bounces here and there. And it could be short covering. It could be the big money covering uh, the shorts. And then we'll see a downward uh, res resumption of the downward trend. Uh, we'll have to see how it plays out, but I wouldn't be buying um, any dips right now. I don't think it's a dip. If it is, it's temporary, and I think we're going to see more lows ahead of us. Um, U.S. retail sales unexpectedly declined, and this is out of um, the WAPO, uh, Washington Post. Unexpectedly declined. When consumers' savings rate is now over a 10-year low, it's in the 4% range, of course there's going to be a pullback on spending. Plus, a lot of people are taking all the other money they used to buy stuff with, and it's going into their gas tank. So why do we see these headlines unexpectedly decline? Of course, um, insane how these headlines keep acting like the things that are happening right now is a surprise. Uh, real estate, more real estate firms laying people off. Redfin, more layoffs. Uh, this was reported out of the Wall Street Journal. Compass uh, announced layoffs as housing market slows. And I was reading through some of these articles and uh, some of these employees were like, oh, we were shocked, they told us to pack up and leave. Um, if you're in the real estate industry and, um, and you don't know about the cyclical, cyclical markets, if I can say the word cyclical, <laughs> uh, booms and busts, just like the name of this channel, um, be ready to get laid off if you're in a cyclical market. Real estate, um, banking, banking in general, we'll have to see. Um, look for a stable industry if you're worried about getting laid off. Hopefully you listening to this are retired and if you are retired, hopefully you're not having to come out of retirement because um, things are getting uh, pretty ugly out there. Uh, D-N-Y-U-Z, Van Life meets $300 a tank gasoline, Van Life. Uh, van Life used to be the low cost way to go. You're not paying rent, you're not paying mortgage. Now with these fuel costs, unless you're just parked somewhere and you have a, a permanent spot to park, uh, $300 a tank for some of these bigger vans. A lot of people bought school buses and converted them into uh, some very nice, in some cases I saw some videos here on YouTube, some very nice uh, places to live. Mobile homes, which they are. A van that you convert into a home, it's mobile. and It's a home, so it's a mobile home. So van life slash mobile home, $300 a tank. Combine that with insurance, uh, vehicle registrations, uh, vehicle maintenance, and um, you know it's going to be close to someone renting an apartment you know maybe not that bad but um, I haven't had to live in a van permanently um, I did for a while actually when I moved here to California from Michigan luckily I had a relative out here and um, an aunt let me stay in her RV actually it was parked on her property so I kinda stayed there so I guess you could say I was homeless at one point and uh, it could happen to anybody I was a kid in my twenties moving out here moved out here to do a music project and um, my vehicle that I bought to drive out here actually had some problems costed a lot of money had to get an engine rebuilt so ended up you could say homeless I wasn't sleeping in a tent but I was in a relatives RV if it wasn't for the um, hospitality of my uh, my relative of my aunt I would have been I don't know where I would have stayed maybe in the broken down van and uh, when the mechanic was working on it I could uh, ask him hey can I sleep in the back while you're working on it <laughs> you know I, I don't know what would have happened but um, you know I'm just lucky I could have been homeless like a lot of people a lot of people that we talk about here in some of the videos that we've showed, uh, homelessness here in San Diego, it's exploding. Uh, so van life, three hundred dollars a tank. Um, hopefully, hopefully these people are still working. I guess if you're living in a van, you're more mobile and you can go to where the jobs are. So instead of actually you know, uh, having to relocate for a job or look for rent or look for a house, you can just uh, drive your van to the new job and. Maybe it's a good way. Maybe that's going to be the new way. Uh, maybe that'll be the new normal. Uh, people ask, when are we going back to normal? Um, I don't think there's going to be a, a back to normal. I think the new normal is abnormal. <laughs> uh, mortgage demand is now roughly half 
of what it was a year ago as rates rise. Um, CNBC, half. Um, so we've got to see some corrections here. We've got to see some uh, bigger price corrections. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping that my, uh, my fear isn't going to come true or come to fruition. Uh, my fear is that they're going to start cutting rates again. They're going to implement all these rescue programs for current homeowners. Not that I want to see people lose their homes. But when you see investors out there buying hundreds of homes, uh, you know, there's got to be a correction somewhere. Even smaller investors buying three, four, five, six, seven homes, um, are they over leveraged? It looks to be the case. And I think that's why they're being so soft on these rate increases. They know how highly leveraged these markets are, the housing market, the stock market, you name it. Uh, now we're seeing some deleveraging. I hope it continues. And I hope that we don't see some other um, rescue programs come out, the foreclosure moratoriums, the foreclosure freezes, foreclosure prevention. Um, maybe they're going to start handing out more, more money for down payments like they have been doing here in California. Uh, down payment assistance programs. Um, so let's hope that we continue to see price corrections in some of these areas. Uh, but in other areas like food, uh, fuel, um, deflation would be beautiful, it would be nice, it would be helpful to a lot of people, but maybe this is the hard lesson that people need to learn uh, to start paying attention. Uh, but again, like I said at the beginning, a lot of people are just so busy with work and everything else, they don't have time to take time out to prepare, to grow your own food. And look at this measly stuff growing back here. It's not really going to last that long. If I can stop the squirrels from eating it, even if that's the case, even if I do stop the squirrels from eating it, it's not enough food to last that long. Uh, you've got to have a big area of your property devoted to gardening and not just growing flowers, growing food. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to be you know, uh, trying to figure out ways to grow their own food. And maybe the government will change it, like in Sri Lanka. Uh, too bad it's only for the government workers. Isn't that interesting how um, you know they get treated like uh, top-tier members of society and the rest of the people, you know. Uh, interesting times, folks. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, continue to prepare. Well, I do know what's going to happen. Things are going to get worse. <laughs> so uh, exactly how it's going to play out, well, we're going to take it day by day. We're going to look at the news. And uh, thank you for the super thanks. I'm going to bring up some names here. Uh, as I exit this video, and hopefully you guys will come back for more. Please make sure you like and subscribe, and see you here very soon. Thank you all very much. Thank you to the following viewers for your kind and generous support. Maria, uh, Greg, EJ, Christopher, uh, C. Ben. Thank you for all of those that have uh, thrown me a tip here uh, into the coffee fund. It goes and can help me keep on putting out content for you. Thank you very much for your support uh, using that super thanks button down below these videos. Talk to everybody very, very soon. Keep stacking. Bye for now. Peace.